Hey everyone, today's video is about painting a uh, midday sky and this is a uh, summer sky in India so it's very hot and there are some objects to it that uh, are a little bit challenging considering uh, you know other aspects of painting such as uh, painting an evening sky or maybe a morning sky so here we are dealing with uh, too much light and very little shadow so you need to be tactful while uh, dealing with uh, such situations now most important thing is that uh, we need to focus on objects and as well as uh, the layers in a landscape since there is too much light and um, we can see a lot of things that we generally tend to ignore uh, while painting an evening sky or maybe um, a morning sky when the light is slightly hazy in certain areas and we tend to focus more on other aspects but here there is no hiding place so we need to use uh, a specific compositional device to create a more naturalistic but also a beautiful uh, landscape so before doing this uh, finished painting i uh, went to this place which is in the state of bihar in india and the moment i saw this scene I knew that uh, it had something very common to Australian uh, impressionistic landscapes and some of the paintings that they did were uh, midday skies unlike uh, any other European paintings but uh, I took some photos before uh, starting on a plein air painting and this is the photograph so I need to change certain aspects to make it more picturesque but you can see that the uh, scene is itself very beautiful and this is the plein air study that i did which is a very small one uh, five by seven inches the moment i saw this uh, scene I, it reminded me of this uh, picture of arthur Streeton, which is a masterpiece and uh, i played with the composition and here you can see the color changes as well and gradually it developed into something like this in this particular video I didn't do any uh, shots of uh, the drawing uh, so this is just a picture of drawing which is very similar to what I do in most cases this is a tonal drawing as well as some line linear aspects so I'm starting off with uh, painting and you can see the value differences between the uh, be between uh, burnt sienna and the color that I'm using which is very high chroma and as well as uh, extremely bright you can see the contrast and I'm just covering up and focusing on the block in part and rather than uh, doing any detail at this stage just put the colors even you don't need to do some of the details as well or may indicate some of the areas and you know generally um, I start from the distant areas but since the color of the sky and uh, the water was very similar I did them in the beginning and gradually move to the distant foliage and now doing the distant land area so you can see the color that I'm uh, putting on the canvas is very bright and powerful and uh, at present there is no indication of shadows which will be put later and you know shadows will be crisp and very short and mostly underneath the surfaces and this is how I need to tackle the situation so this is the picture of the block in now I'm moving on to modeling and uh, increasing the chroma as well so I'm focusing on all the other aspects and at this moment right now in the uh, modeling stage focusing on shapes the correctness of shapes if I need to alter something I will do that if I need to increase the chroma, I'll do that. So at present, I'm uh, focusing on the shapes and uh, creating new shapes. Some of the things that have uh, that did not cross my mind. So I'm increasing some of the highlights as well on the clouds and also increasing the colors. So everything is like, you know, exploratory to some degree. So that is my process. You know some of the things do not cross my mind while i'm doing the modeling maybe at a later stage i'll change that 
and sky is almost like an abstract uh, expressionist painting you know it has a shape but it's not definite because you know even if you see the curve you can see an alternate curve so it's like that so it's slightly exploratory i prefer to do it that way and even the land is also very similar so various abstract shapes and we have a realistic picture so that is the you know funny part and here i'm increasing the chroma and also the brightness so it may look a little different uh, compared to what it was earlier but uh, the scene that i saw didn't have any clouds but uh, you know a generally a flat sky is mm, not that beautiful but you know i have seen a few paintings where they painted india and they painted a flat blue sky these are 19th century and 18th century artists and they were masters of their craft and they painted india and they use some sort of variation into those colors but uh, um, those paintings almost had a blue sky and there was no variation so it was a different experience maybe i can um, you know use that but at present in this particular painting i needed to have uh, uh, clouds and um, you know other variations and here i am you know putting down some lighter bluish uh, green color and to create atmosphere and the differences between various parts i am increasing the chroma a little as well as uh, some brightness and here i'm adding a bit more yellow compared to the background i'm working on the trees as well i'm focusing mostly on the shadow parts and then i'll uh, make the trees and these are mostly the shadows and now you you will gradually see how i do the trees these are i'm just rolling a round brush nothing more and these are some simple shapes watercolorists know it better than me how to create a simple shape but uh, this is very similar to that procedure and some white marks here and there now i've moved on to the ground section and i'm using a palette knife with very thick paint and this is almost you know a bright and apple yellow kind of a color and still trying to create some variations but you know this is mostly white because all the sections in this landscape are receiving light and that is the kind of a challenge but if you can create variations with the different kinds of strokes it may retain the interest because the middle part that you just saw is the central focal point because that is the brightest part in the painting and here i'm creating some indications of shadow or the differences between land masses this is sand in the river and the river is called dharhara in which is uh, known to the persons who live nearby and it's a very beautiful place crystal clear water and very comfortable and you can spend the whole day here here i'm trying to create some shadows but shadows are not long shadows are also short now i'm working on some foliage but you can see that uh, although this part is slightly um, you know slightly shadowy but i'm still trying to create some variations here this is the only part where there is some variation otherwise most of the areas are receiving light and bottom parts have a linear shadow area nothing more than that so this has been a great exercise you can see that i just put a shadow and this reflects what is there even the shadows are mostly blackish in nature french ultramarine and you know burnt sienna 
but the cloud and the color of the water are mostly cobalt blue sometimes a little burnt sienna added to it and titanium white and warm areas are made with uh, white and yellow ochre and here I am using a big brush to create the water and you can see how uh, effectively the water's transparency has been created big brushes are the best this is also a big brush but this is a fan brush and this is what I use to uh, create my foliage especially when I am painting outside this is a modified one flat on the top you can see that I am also trying to create some variation in the lighter areas but I am creating very crisp contrast and the contrast will be more apparent when uh, I will be working on these you know front frontal trees and this is the modeling that has been done after the modeling I've moved on to detail and there is no particular mass in this tree but I'll create those and they won't take a long time I'm using a round brush to create uh, the trees you can see my technique quite clearly I'm just rolling them to create abstract marks and just uh, angling my wrist so that any kind of variation is created this this is sort of a controlled accident that I use and here are some light marks and you know surprisingly this particular tree had very big leaves I don't know the nature of the or name of the tree but um, you know it had very big leaves so creating this was also an experience in itself while doing the details I am also uh, trying to concentrate on the basic pattern of the value which part is lighter and which part is darker so I am modifying my color scheme according to that so some top edges of the leaves may have a little bit more light but gradually they will look unified these are some crisp marks and I am doing the trunk as well trunk is thin I struggled a bit here because I had, I lost my concentration but gradually I was able to pull it off this is not something very difficult I have done it again and again but you know just lost a bit of concentration there but eventually it will look fine and here are some uh, line works done with a sable brush with a lot of linseed oil I don't use the tops I use linseed oil but very little amount of it because adding too much uh, medium is not great for the paint structure and here are some line works with that sable brush this part the bottom section is uh, bound to remain dark to retain interest in the frontal section and since um, it was already there in reality so there is no problem following that pattern because this is creating a frame and you can look through that now you will be able to di uh, differentiate between the valued value that that I put and front sections will be quite dark although there are some variations some parts will be lighter some parts uh, will be darker and with middle tones as well you can see the patterns of the stroke and I will be putting some highlights on top of those leaves but you can see the differences in value is quite clear I'm working very swiftly I'm not focusing too much on detail and just trying to create the marks and concentrating hard here the speed obviously has died down it's not about speed here it's mostly about concentrating and creating the most accurate marks and also trying to focus whether any section of this um, is looking false it may not um, that is like uh, not a part of reality that you want to create if it looks contrived then you must change it Here, there are some marks that I'm putting with yellowish marks 
and you can see I have made some sky holes I missed uh, the footage of that and now I'm focusing on the foreground some parts are lighter some parts are darker I'm using my small uh, rounded palette knife and it uh, puts some paint in one area and then it uh, misses the other area so this creates an automatic abstraction and this is my bigger palette knife which uh, creates some you know spreadable paint areas so applications are different and i'm putting a little bit more highlight so all parts are not dark you need to create an impression of reality rather than you know creating something that is not real and here is some final you know points of interest a little sapling there using a small sable brush that i used earlier you know the technique that i am employing is very similar to uh, the watercolorists who actually do these things in the end and their beginnings are very abstract and then gradually they focus on modeling and then finally they use the darks uh, to create the impression of reality and I am also doing uh, very similar and here is some you know, impression of contours and this is the shot of the final painting and um, I certainly believe that I have been able to create a good uh, midday you know, landscape as you can see most of the parts are very abstract in nature there are suggestive details so if you like this video then please click the like button and also subscribe for future videos and also remember to click the bell icon also do remember to check out my website www.costumemfineart.com for more paintings I thank you for your time Take care.